Hello again! Uh, I'm going to give a uh, tutorial here, Unity tutorial on how to, uh, well, well let me just go ahead and play this game here and I'll show you. Okay, so we have uh, several different hero characters. Let me show you them from the front. We have three different hero characters and we have a couple different like stand-in kind of creatures here. Uh, this is from a game I'm working on called Arena Champions uh, and hopefully will be released for iPhone and Android systems. And uh, everything you see here today is in just a test phase, so none of the graphics or anything are, are, are final, none of the textures, none of the gameplay. It's just here for testing. Okay, so uh, we have a uh, character, so when I, I click or, for example, tapped on one, if this was iOS or Android, uh, it would select that character. All right, so let's see how we've, we've done that. Okay, let me bring up the script. I have a script here called Touch Manager, which uh, I've attached to a, a game object in my scene. And what I've done is I've gone ahead and created a script that takes the input.get mouse button up, which is uh, the left mouse button by default, all right? Um, so anyway, it, it does that. You'll see here there's some extra checking. This just basically makes sure that, for example, I do not accidentally, it only detects, it only uh, executes the script if I am not, for example, clicking down here into the UI elements or over here onto these, these different UI elements, all right? Okay, so uh, that's what the purpose of the extra check is, all right? Okay, so basically what you can do is um, you can either use input.get mouse button up or if you go into the uh, Un Unity scripting reference, you can say input.get touch, and then there's a lot of different options there. Get touch has uh, touch phase moved, touch phase began, touch phase ended. So um, you can do all those different things. But uh, one good thing I've found out so far uh, in my Dragon Wars game, for example, I use this, which was input.get mouse button up or down or, or whatever. Uh, actually translates into touch events uh, on the iOS. I'm not sure. I, I believe it, it does the same thing for Android. So um, you can, for example, easily translate your um, iOS code uh, to a desktop application and vice versa just by using input to get mouse button, right? But uh, what you use is, depends on your needs, okay? The next line you need to, to worry about is... Uh, you know, before I get into this, let me go back into the game world and just select some of these characters and show you something. All right? So you'll see here that all of my characters have this kind of lozenge thing around them. That is, in fact, a character controller. You'll see it here. You'll see the dimensions of the character controller. I'm going to do a special tutorial about that because the character controller is quite cool. Uh, but basically, you can assign that by going into Component, Physics, and then you can assign the character controller. You could also assign a box collider, a sphere collider, or a mesh collider, different things like that. But basically, you need some sort of, before this um, script will, will work, you need some sort of a physics object to, uh, you know, to collide with, to, um, to have the touch events kind of bump up against. All right, so once we've attached that character controller, then I can go into the next line of the code with, that you have to worry about. Of course, you're seeing uh, oodles of code here because I've got a lot of different things going on, but I'm just going to break down the things that you need to worry about. Number one, either input.get mouse button up or down, or input.get touch. Number two, physics, if physics.raycast, ray, comma, hit. All right, the ray and hit, you're saying where are these variables coming from? Well, those are kind of like internally created or something. Uh, I'm not sure where they come from, but basically, you don't have to define these two variables before you, you use this. Just if physics ray cast on hit, uh, if you do that, the ray is created and the hit is the object that is touched or clicked on. All right. So in this case, let's look down here at this block of code. Uh, what this block of code does is it goes through and it says that if the hit object had the tag player hero then execute this block of code. What the block of code does first is it goes through all the hero characters uh, in the game and it finds this script that's attached to these hero characters called player hero vars 
and it selects and it sets their selected attribute to false. Okay. Then once once it's done that, I go back and I say, okay, now f only for the guy that was selected, set his selected attribute to true. The reason why I've done that in, in the case of my game was I want to have it so that you select just one guy at a time. If you wanted to select multiple guys, you would just um, eliminate this part of the script. But it's a good thing I have it because uh, I need to show you how to loop through um, all the characters of a certain type uh, within the game world. All right, so first we're going to loop through all the player heroes. We're going to get the um, player hero vars script that's attached. As you can see here, there's a player hero vars script attached to uh, these three different heroes. All right. And then I'm going to, once I have that variable for that, that certain object, I'm going to set the selected attribute to false. Okay, and uh, the way I do that is I first create an array of game objects. I'm calling it PHL, which in my mind stands for Player Hero List. Okay. Next thing, I'm going to populate that array with this command. Okay, PHL equals game object dot find game objects with tag player hero. So the find game objects with tag, of course, uh, spits out an array. So you just put that into the uh, PHL array. Next thing, I'm going to loop through each of uh, I'm going to loop through the array of player hero objects, and I'm going to say for. If you know the uh, any kind of scripting, you'll know that for uh, is is a loop that keeps looping a certain number of times. So we're going to loop through the array, and we're going to create a new variable. In in this case, I'm calling it PH for player hero, and then the colon is the type of very object, which in this case is the game object in the the uh, PHL list at that uh, point in the array. Okay, then we execute execute the um, stuff that's inside of the for loop. Right, let me indent this so it's easier to see what's going on. Okay, I create a var a variable. Uh, I'm calling it PHV in this case, and that's is a uh, I'm giving it a type of player hero vars, which is the name of the script that we're going to get. Uh, another good thing for you to note here is a way to get anything that's attached to a uh, game object or a certain tag is to use this get component. So I have a variable called PH, which stands for the player hero that's currently in the list, and I'm saying get, get the component called player hero vars. Okay, as you can see here, the player hero vars script has all the variables that is important to this character. So one of those variables is called uh, selected, and I'm going to set that to false by, by uh, default. You'll notice though inside of the player hero vars scripting uh, thing here, if you look closely that the selected does not show up here. For some reason, if you, I go into my player hero vars, you'll see that I have a variable declared outside of all of my uh, functions called selected, it is right here. Okay. I wonder if I can give it a type of bool. Nope. Okay, so uh, booleans for some reason do not show up in the uh, listing there. So unfortunately for um, for us, uh, even though I've, I've set the uh, selected attribute under the start function to false by default, you won't actually see it here for debugging purposes. Uh, just keep that in mind. All right. Okay, let's go back to the touch manager. Okay, then after I've looped through that, uh, how do I go ahead and again get the? Um, in this case, I want to uh, select one of the characters that's been touched on. I've, I've successfully deselected everybody, but I want to select the character that's been touched on. All right. So the way I do that is with this line of code. Okay. Again, I'm, I need to access the player hero variables script or player hero var script in order to set the selected attribute to true. So what I did was I created a, a new variable outside of the for loop in this case. And I've said the ph vars uh, variable ph vars type is ph vars equals hit dot transform dot game object dot get component. And then I gave it the name of the component I wanted 
which in this case was the, was the uh, script called player hero vars. And then I just said page vars that selected dot e equals true. Okay, so that's how you select one or get the object that was in fact uh, touched or clicked on and how to go ahead and uh, access a certain variable within that object. All right, you go ahead and uh, let's do an overview here. Uh, input dot get mouse button down or input dot get touch and then physics dot ray cast uh, colon ray comma hit and then if hit dot transform dot tag equals 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 uh, whatever the tag is of the object you want to test against and then finally if you want to get the component within that object you would say hit dot transform dot game object dot get component and then the game component okay so that is in fact how you do uh, quite a few things at once that's how you uh, select on things how you uh, assign um, you know the different uh, capsules the character controllers to it and how you differentiate from one object to another so I hope that helps you out